Hi, Thomas from Field Tennis. Today we're going to talk about the hip or pelvis rotation, which is one of the fundamentals of all ground strokes. So what does it mean that it's fundamental? It means that it's always there regardless of the style of your stroke. So it doesn't matter whether you're doing forehand, for example, like this, like you're taking it up or you're putting the elbow here or you're going straight back. The pelvis or hip rotation is always there regardless of the style of your stroke or even regardless of your grip. It's always there if you play a two-handed back and with a high take back and you hit or you go down and you hit. So just that you understand what does it mean that it's fundamental. It means that it's always present regardless of the style of the stroke. So how do strokes look like, we'll start with the forehand, when the player is not engaging their pelvis, they're lacking the hip rotation. So I'll just show you from this angle, it'll be more obvious. So let's say hit one nice easy forehand. So it would look something like this. So the player would be twisted a bit and this hip would stay back. So, so the player would position and then they would play something like this. So it should look more like this. So if there is a hip rotation, then you see the hip or the pelvis twisting and it's rotating and the upper body and the whole body is much more connected. So this is a stroke with hip rotation. Usually there's a lack of hip rotation uh, on a two-handed backhand and it looks something like this. So when the ball is coming and the player is hitting a two-handed backhand, again they're hitting like this, they're keeping this back, the upper body goes but the lower body doesn't go. So very common on two-handed backhand players position and they hit like this rather than moving forward with their hip or the whole pelvis is twisting so that the, the whole body is connected, upper body and lower body. On the one-handed backhand, you can also have a lack of hip rotation. So it's not so obvious, but I can try and so show. So the player is just kind of hitting like this and you can see nothing happening here. So they can do everything right, then they're just like this. Instead of engaging their pelvis and doing something like this. So there is less of hip uh, engagement in a one-handed backhand uh, than two-handed backhand or forehand. And in my experience, it tends to happen a bit more naturally. So players don't really have such big problems engaging a bit of their hips. It comes a bit more naturally, like throwing a frisbee but usually the problem is on the forehand and two-handed backhand. So for those of you that are a bit more impatient and not so much interested in the why all this happens, let me just show you one of the solutions that you can try and apply tomorrow on a tennis court. So when you're playing a neutral stance forehand and when the hip stays back and it's not coming forward, it's usually because this leg is stuck here so the player positions correctly, let's say correctly for a neutral stance, then they're hitting and they just keep the foot here. So I like to say that in this case, the foot is the boss and the hip cannot move. So the hip is following, but it should be exactly the opposite. The hip or pelvis should be the boss and it needs to drag the foot. So one simple exercise that also we like to do here on clay courts is ask players to make a line with the tip of the shoe. So make a line and that is giving you like a feel feedback and also like a hearing feedback that you hear the, the scratching, the dragging. So when you're hitting a forehand, you always want to feel in a very nice, of course, nice fundamental conditions that the hip is the boss. And if the hip wants to go forward, then the leg has to follow.
So I'll hit a few balls now and you can observe. So I'm going and when I'm hitting, I rotate my hips and I pull the leg. So instead of like this and keeping the foot where it was, you have to let the hip go. Here's another one. And I'm always rotating into the stroke with the hip. So that's one of very simple solutions. Drag the foot and maintain balance. What is not good to do is to over rotate. When you over rotate, you will do like this and the foot will come forward too early or as a part of the stroke. So when we are demonstrating the basic stroke, we just want to stand in position like this, comfortably upright and the hip is here and we drag the foot. When we play real tennis and we're moving, then oftentimes for a skilled player, this foot will come here and then they start moving back again. So it comes forward with a, it comes forward with a delay and not part of the stroke like this. So the solution for the two-handed backhand is exactly the same because it's almost like a left-handed forehand for right-handers. So again, if the player is doing uh, the stroke incorrectly, then they will keep the foot back and the hip cannot go. So the foot is the boss, but it should be the other way around. So the hip should be the boss or the whole pelvis rotation is the main guy and it's pulling the leg. So the leg has to follow. It's following like an anchor. Like this is a big ship that's going, that's going on, a, on a sea and it's following, it's pulling the anchor on the ground. So the ship is winning but the anchor is pulling it back a bit. So again the wrong way of doing it is that you over rotate. So that means that you would do something like this and this foot would come forward. So maybe you would understand the hip rotation or pelvis rotation a bit too literally or you take it too far and you would think that it's like this. So it's just up to here. When we demonstrate the stroke and we want to see the fundamentals, then this is the finished position. Players can also lack hip or pelvis rotation on the one-handed back and so it looks something like this. It looks something like this. So the player is trying to stay sideways with the upper body, like maybe like they've been told. But when they do that, they completely block the hips, the pelvis. So even though we are trying to stay a bit sideways with the upper body, you can see that this position is now different. So if you just observe this position like this back end, if you watch my leg, my thigh, like this or like this. So this one, you see, it's coming in. So when I hit with, uh, with some pelvis rotation, then this part is coming in and providing power and stability. Uh, my friend Peter here is going to help me with a little demonstration. Uh, I will try to show you the importance of hip rotation with the feel-based exercise. So Peter, you put the hand like this. So imagine this is the ball, his hand is the ball and I'm hitting into the contact with the ball and I can do it two ways. I can just hit into the contact and you can see that my, my hip or pelvis is not rotating. So I'm just kind of doing with the upper hand and you can observe a bit Peter how his body is feeling this contact, right? So it's like this. But what I want to do is I want to transfer this into contact. So he can tell you that it's much more powerful contact and much more stable contact. So when I'm hitting a tennis ball, when I'm making contact with the ball, and this is very, very important, very uh, one of the essentials of tennis, is that you visualize on a normal forehand and two-handed backhand, you visualize that exactly when you're making contact, so as you're passing through contact, that your right hip, if your right-hander, is moving constantly. Because one of the most common mistakes, even if players do rotate their hips a bit, 
is that when they come to contact, they stop their block to hip and they lose all the power. So you have to visualize and you can do it slowly like this. I come to the hand and I push through the hand right with the hip. And that way the power and the stability of the stroke of my body is going to be transferred through my arm. So you can see that I, my arm is just here like a, like a stick and I am pushing in contact with rotation. Of course, I, I do it two ways. I'm doing it through the hip and also through the shoulders. So my shoulder axis or chest is very firm and I rotate here through the contact. And that's why it's so important because this gives us a really good stability of the racket and it gives us power for the stroke. So we're staying with the forehand. So again, you, and you try to implement your receiving a nice ball and just picture that right when you're making contact with the ball. So you visualize the racket is passing like through the contact zone. So somewhere here are hitting the ball. So visualize that exactly when the racket is passing through the contact zone, your right hip, if your right hander is moving continuously. So I'll try to demonstrate. So it's moving, it's not moving very fast, it's not a jerky movement. It's just moving very continuously with a steady speed. And when I do that, I get a very stable racket face and very good support here in the hand. What about an open stance forehand? Uh, there's way less room to move the hip or pelvis. As you can see, it's like half because when I'm neutral, I my, my right hip, if you imagine, my right hip can move a lot through space. It's going to move from here to here. But when I play open stance, it's way less. It's just this. But again, it's important to try and engage it. So if I do incorrectly, it's going to look something like this. So if I do incorrectly open stance, it's going to look something like this. It's going to stay there in the back. So one more, something like this. But when I try to, okay, one more, when I try to drive with the right hip forward, then I get more, you see, or if I just stay on the right leg, I can just stay on the right leg and I try to drive forward and stay balanced. So it's always important that balance is priority. Otherwise you can try and do these hip rotations. You take them too far, too literally, and you will lose balance. So in the open stance forehand, in the same way, you can picture that your right hip is moving when you're making contact with the ball. There's two ways to use the hip rotation on a pro level. So those of you that are very good in analyzing tennis strokes, you might be shaking your head until now when you're listening to me because you will say, but I'm pretty sure that when I watch Roger Federer hit a forehand, he's going to block the hip, he's going to go with the hip and he's going to stop the hip from rotation and his arm is going to whip through. So it's going to look something like this. So. The pro player is going to go with the hip, then they're going to stop moving the hip and they're going to whip the arm through to get maximum acceleration. As you can see, I can demonstrate this, but I find it very hard to play because I'm going to hit the ball too fast. <laughs> so it becomes too risky. So I don't advise that to normal recreational tennis players that they try to block their hip because usually they do it the wrong way. They block it right at contact and they block it too early. So when you do it the wrong way, you block the hip too early and you go like this. And when you do it the right way, the hip is coming through and then it blocks and the arm swings through. So it goes more like, like a whip like this. Woof. And you get a very whippy, very fast stroke. And Roger Feather is one of the players that is using that to the maximum and he gets a very whippy, very fast forehand. 
And as I showed you, I can demonstrate it, I know how it's executed, but I find it very hard to play because I don't train four hours per day for 10 years to master that kind of stroke. And I recommend that you use a much simpler approach, uh, less complicated. And that means that when you're hitting the ball, you are trying to go together. You don't do any hip deceleration, at least not intentionally, but you're just trying to go through the ball and you will make your strokes very steady. I suggest that you start working on the hip rotation or whole body rotation in the, in the stroke or in the ball when you play mini tennis already. And you will see that it's actually easier to control the ball than just with the hand. Because some players find it very difficult to play mini tennis. Because uh, they feel that if they engage the body, it's going, they will hit too much. And then they just play with the hand. So it might look something like this. When the ball is coming to the forehand, they're kind of a bit afraid and they're just playing with the hand and they keep losing control. Because they feel if they go with the body, they will have too much power. But that's not the case, unless you rotate very fast. It's actually the hand acceleration that gives, that, uh, gives the racket uh, too much power. And you will find it that you can control much better slow ball when you slowly rotate and you take away the hand and everything. So you just rotate like this. You can see that I'm always coming in with the hip and I'm hitting with body rotation so the hip is coming forward i'm not playing with the hand alone right so doesn't matter whether i end up in neutral stance or open stance i can end up in open stance and i try to rotate so open stance and i rotate so the same goes for two-handed backhand where usually are the most problems with the hip so players are playing something like this and keeping their hip or pelvis back so they hit with the hand and they lose control. So you should try and picture that you're always coming in with the hip. Even after contact, you can think I'm coming in. Next one. So always rotating with the whole body. The main reason why this works is because when you focus on the whole body, and whole body is a big mass compared to the arm. It's quite difficult to accelerate a big mass fast suddenly. So if I want to accelerate the whole body fast, it's quite a lot of effort compared to accelerating my hand. Accelerating my hand fast is not much effort. So it's much easier to lose control of the hand because it can go too fast or two hands and much more difficult to lose control of the body because it's a big mess. So that's why when we play mini tennis and we rotate slowly into the ball, okay, let's try. When we rotate slowly into the ball, it's much easier to control the speed of playing. With a slow rotation through contact, it's much easier to control than with the hand. So of course, you have to experience this and try it and, and you will see it. But the instinct that's telling you on mini tennis that you shouldn't engage your body is wrong. The instinct is wrong because you, you want to just play with the hand, you feel it's too much. So the only way it's too much if you do it too fast. If you do it slow, you're going to find a way of, of controlling the ball very easy on short distance. So I'm going to finish this lesson with a bit of free hitting. You can observe how I do it, how I execute the stroke. So put your attention into my pelvis region. Observe the right hip now since the camera is on the forehand side. So observe that carefully. And uh, I will see you next time with the next video from Field Tennis.